Hello, and welcome back. Um, just a little recap of where we are so far. So in the past few videos, we first of all got the application to work. So we can see a triangle and we can see the frame rate as well. And then um, the way we synchronized this was pausing manually. Um, so then in the next session, we did a bit of like multi-threaded synchronization stuff to make it slightly more efficient. And we get the same thing with a slight frame rate increase. Um, but here's where we're at right now. This works great, but if we um, resize it or minimize it, then we get an error. So that's not great. And that's what we're gonna be fixing this time. Um, we can see down here, we have this um, error code, Vulcan error out of date, Kronos. Um, now what that means is that the swap chain, which is the whole um, graphics protocol for putting images on the surface, um, has become out of date. It's no longer valid. So if we took this and we shrunk it, it would be out of date. Or the other code is suboptimal, which means that, yeah, the window can draw to a, a shrunk down version, but it's doing its own um, calculation to shrink it to a smaller or larger frame size, um, which is suboptimal. But anyway, so we minimize it, we get an error. Here is the improved version. It runs, we minimize it, we bring it back, it's all good. So that's what we're going to be examining. One thing that I did as well is I took this um, class and I segregated the functions into sections. And the cool thing about this is we can selectively, you know, it makes it a little more efficient to navigate around the code base because it is growing. Um, yeah, okay. So uh, let's have a look at the swap chain. So this is the issue. When we um, minimize or do whatever, we need to create a new swap chain. So I've got this function called recreate swap chain. Um, and don't worry about the top stuff for the moment. Um, first thing we need to do is wait for um, any current processes to do their thing and stop. And then um, we're going to have this function called clean up swap chain. And then we're going to go through these steps, pretty similar to the init Vulkan function. Um, the only thing to note, I guess, is here we're going to create the command buffers, but not the command pool. The command buffers are the, it's the specific set of instructions to draw specifically on the window. Um, they need to be recreated because the window has changed size. However, the command pool, which defines that multi-thread um, command environment, that fundamentally hasn't changed, so we can keep that. Okay. Uh, right, so let's have a look at clean up swap chain. So that pretty much destroys everything. Um, first of all, we need to query this process address as it is an external function. Um, but yeah, now we just, I pretty much just copy pasted this code from um, the exit function. Yeah, so um, we loop through if we've got arrays, um, and otherwise we just call a single destroy function for a single thing. But this is the really important thing. For these array functions, we need to set, uh, okay, so calling destroy will deallocate the underlying um, memory that the reference points to, but then we also need to um, get rid of the reference itself. Because when we call, for example, swap chain create buffers, frame buffers, it um, expects an empty list because it appends new list members. So if we didn't clear this off to an empty list, then we would have the set of old frame buffers and then the set of new frame buffers which were created. And then when um, Vulcan tries to use those, 
use that set of frame buffers for something, then it will access like the first three um, members, which point to deleted objects, and it will say that's not valid, and it will throw an error code. So that's the really important thing. This is the same code as um, the exit function. We just need to um, also set the lists to empty lists. Okay. So um, I guess it's time to look at this code at the top. So what this does, just thinking. Okay, what this does is it gets the uh, width and height of the window. And if we minimize it, then that width and height goes down to zero. So we need to, if we've got, um, if that's happened, then we just need to wait for um, the window to go back up to regular size. Um, for the obvious reason that if it's been minimized, we can't really create a surface to draw to. It would be a surface of zero width and zero height. And Vulkan doesn't really like that. So this is just handling the minimize case. Okay. So that's, oh, uh, one other thing. So if we go to the exit function, now we can um, shorten this a little bit because if we just call this um, clean up swap chain, that does all of the, um, destroying all of the uh, members of the swap chain. So the frame buffers and image views and everything. Okay, so that's good. Um, the next thing is uh, how do we actually call this? So it happens in the draw. There's a few things. So um, in the online Vulcan tutorial website where, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a genius. I just get this off online tutorials. Um, but there is a bit of work in interpreting um, that for a Python environment because the tutorials are written for C++. But anyway, um, the standard behavior within C++ of this Vulkan acquire next image is to um, return like a result. So an error code, which will either be um, a success flag or an error flag. But it turns out um, in the Python version, that is that error code is returned in this um, Q present function. Now, the way we handle that error code, I just click in here. So it does its thing. Oh, that's funny. Ah, because we have, right, okay, just give me one second. There we are. All right. So um, because that is a, ah, is it a device or an, an app thing? It's a device function. Okay, yeah. So because that's a device specific function, we have to query it. Um, now it says here, if the result is not success, then raise an exception. So for that reason, we get the error flag by wrapping this in a try except block. Now what we do is we, um, we catch that um, error code. So it says here, raise exception codes results. So if we click into exception codes, say uh, dictionary, and here we can see there's this definition suboptimal and um, out of date. So those are the two things that we want to search for. So we will catch those as exceptions. And in those cases, um, we're going to recreate our swap chain and just exit early from the function. We've got this other variable called window resized. And the reason we've got this is that um, sometimes GLFW will automatically, or uh, 
Vulkan will automatically flag a resize, um, but sometimes it won't. In that case, GLFW has a way to explicitly set up or explicitly signal that a resize has occurred. So um, just think of this as a, a simple binary variable, um, Boolean variable. If we look at the window initialization. Um, if we want to um, run our own function on a resize, then it's this function here, glfw set frame buffer size callback. It takes a reference to the window object and then a function pointer. Um, now, for, uh, for whatever reason, um, this function pointer can't be a like class member variable. It has to be just a standard um, function. And the reason for that is, we run this. Uh, the reason for that is GLFW is looking for a function which doesn't return anything, but it takes as its arguments a pointer to the window and um, the width and height that the window has been resized to. So we don't need those variables, um, but we will need this function. So we need a way for this function outside the class to talk to the class. Um, now, if we were in C or C++, languages which um, handle memory a little more explicitly than Python, then we could call this function, glfw get window user pointer, um, and that points, uh, that um, returns a pointer to the object that is running the window. Issue is it returns a void pointer. Um, which is just a memory location with no type. So we would then have to take that void pointer and cast it to an app pointer and then set a member, member variable for the app. The issue is here, um, Python does not really, there's not an easy way to cast um, Python void pointers, which are just none into actual Python um, app types, uh, class types. So after spending hours trying to work this out, let's just go with a global variable. It's not so great. Um, Python lets you use global variables and then it warns you that it's that you're using global variables. So just be careful, but otherwise it's not a big deal. Um, yeah, unless there's anything that I've forgotten to mention, that is it for this um, this session. So again, we've got this and it works and we can minimize and bring it back and it's all good. Okay, cool. In the next session, we're going to start looking at um, putting in our own vertices as opposed to hard coding them in the shader. Um, otherwise, that'll be it for now. Um, all the best and have fun. Bye.